Well, hello there, everybody on the internet. It's me again, Dakian, here to ramble at you about my miniatures. It is Monday the 10th of June, 2019. And I have, as you can see, perhaps finished uh, the project that I've had in the works for the longest time, with the fourth and final faction of the Alchemy game, the... Um, um, the cat people the name slipped my mind they're called they're called something <laughs> in, in the fluff anyway um as you might notice and if you followed along i there's a few things i've done a few things i haven't done i have not painted them to the standard that was on the box art because i felt that was overdoing it that was somebody working on on like master resin casts and uh, with plenty of time and doing something to show off this is just army men so i've simplified it i did not pay, paint the striped pants i just kept them pl plain white uh, it's a simple blue and white color scheme on the on the uh, clothing and all the fur is the same color uh, in uh, there, there's a few different tones of brown on the cover art box arts and some are black even but i went with this gold brown uh literally it's it's vallejo model color of gold brown which is the base color for this uh form the paint and yeah and i just painted them up in in a very I, I did do the i tried to do some spots on these guys because they're they are uh they have a different kind of body shape than the others they're obviously supposed to be cheetah based because they're running fast they look like they're running really fast and they're leaner than the others and maybe the big dudes i i perhaps should have tried to go for more of a tiger effect um they do have that on the head on the box art pictures but Eh, I still screw it. They're good enough as is. I can't keep these guys around uh, forever. And they have to leave my painting table sometime. And they... Uh, yeah. They got knocked off. Or knocked out, perhaps, I should say. Ah, <laughs> uh, well... Uh, and after I did these, I moved on to some more Reaper Bones, which are also finished, so let's have a look at those. And, as I uh, mentioned, there's some bones that I have to pick, well, or to paint, or that I have painted up. First, this little simple uh, dried-out fountain with uh, a statue uh, standing over it. Try to give it some different shading uh, so the actual statue is subtly different from the stone of the actual basin and then there's a lot of uh, remnants of different colors like uh, just dried out stuff in the bottom and it's shinier because I, I want to imply that it's still wet inside even though there's not actually any water in it you know I, I considered filling it up with you know these like a water effect but that would be really expensive filling this whole thing with those so-called realistic water products yeah uh, that would be weird also that would make it difficult for somebody to stand in it if you put a mini in it, in it. um yeah that's him uh next up we have these ghosts mostly ghost pirates i think uh, I think it's just uh, one. This is. I think this model is called a banshee. Yeah, otherwise, in the line, but yeah, it's it's clearly a female in a in a dress with long hair. No clear pirate accoutrements, but this one, for example, has some sort of boarding pike and has a monkey on his sh shoulder or a parrot or something it's it's a little unclear 
<clears throat> this one is trying to drink from various bottles he's found. I decided to paint the bottles as real bottles, not ghostly bottles, just to yeah, make him a little bit more tragic. Uh, here is a clearly a pirate with a cutlass guarding a treasure chest. And uh, oh, this one also has a cutlass and a, and a, uh, or a hanger of some sort. Clear pirate hat and gear, and there's the railing that looks like broken piece of decking and railing from from a pirate ship, maybe. Uh, and finally, we have the ape attack. Now, as I said, I painted these in some weird unnatural colors to make them look a bit more dramatic and effective. And there, the highlighting here on the skin is not subtle. I just wanted to stand out and be stark. And uh, because the fur is kind of subtle, but then I painted the skin not so much subtle. And I haven't put these on any um, extra bases because I thought for at least two of them, the supply bases were pretty hefty on their own. This one is a little thin, but oh well. We have this guy. I started painting his armor as bronze, but I painted over it because it's like, no, it doesn't make any sense. I, I, it's, it should be heavy leather instead. It's boiled leather, actually, queer boiled is what it's probably. And there's a little, this metal, of course, uh, and the, I made the headband and the, the wristband bronze, though, to, those could be metal. But eh, I've painted some simple gemstone effects. Uh, very simply cheated using the the uh, Citadel sort of gemstone paints. Um, yeah, a nice little collection of completed stuff. That brings us to like what is it? Uh, Nineteen minis. That's a lot. Anyway, moving on to projects still in the works. So can you see anything here? Okay, so I thought I'd do one of these um, multi-part progression videos for, for this first batch of, um, well, not the first, it's actually the second batch of, of uh, Bones 4 stuff. Because, um, I have some things of interest to say and mostly it's to praise Reaper because they have really upped their game. This is one of the elves, uh, her right arm is not attached yet, and they've really upped the detail level. Honestly, if this figure had been produced in the Bones 1 era, like the face would be an indistinct blob and many of the, the various spaces on her body would just melt together. But here everything is clear and legible. There, and there's almost no mold lines. I mean, there's a slight here. Uh, I'm, I can only see it right now because I have like magnifying glasses on. There's a light, slight thing you need to shave off here. And, and I, I, I'm only doing this because I'm obsessive. You really don't need to do it. Uh, th and there's places like here, on this guy, on his shoulder. There's a mole line, but it's indented, actually. It's not raised. So, I'm not sure what I'd do about that. Or, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of scraping like that, but there's nothing big. And on, on this one, this one was the only one where I had any real issue which was that she had a bit of flashing under her nose which I had to very carefully remove um, so not sure how her face is gonna look when it's put on but this is really 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 good stuff and the the cobalt man they were a revelation I mean this sort of detail in such a small figure and I painted all the previous bones Kobolds and goblins, they are nothing like this. This is, and there again, there's a slight mold line there, back of the hand. 
but really I could have ignored that uh, like this one has nothing in the way of mole lines that I can see it's really really quite remarkable how good this is and this isn't even uh, bones black this is the, the previous generation of bones material. You can tell by the color because this is bones black. This this slightly darker gray uh, as opposed to the light gray. See, that's bones black. Now, it looks like I've assembled this fully. I have not, I've actually, um, the, the roof, I simply uh, put in, temporarily to so that I, I, I glued the pillars in to the bottom and I just put the roof on to help them set in the proper position and because I need to paint the inside of this roof off you know when it's loose because uh, there's no way I can get to that otherwise so, so this was actually a little bit more complicated than I thought but this is this is <laughs> This is ready for priming already. Um, these are not quite ready for priming. I, as usual, I put the human size figures on the standard 25 mil plastic basis. I'm gonna need to do a little green stuff to cover up and add some basing grit. And the, um, the cobalts I put on these penny washers um, need to fill them out as well a little bit. And, ooh. See, they have actually made cobblestone texture on these integral bases. Mm, I can't just put down grit and paint it like dirt around that. I I need to uh, I need to rep try to replicate that texture. Oh well, making some more work for me. But anyway, yeah. Uh. Yeah, that, that's just wanted to check in during the week and uh, update you on this. I'll uh, film another clip when I have something more to say. And here we're at the next stage where I, I don't know why I bothered. Uh, I've, I've added some green stuff around uh, the rims of these and try to sculpt in some cobblestones. I'm, I, I'm a horrible sculptor. I, I don't know how to do this and it doesn't really match. I don't know why I bothered, but I tried. Uh, I might as well have just put down some of the, the earth paste and, and painted it gray and said, well, it's rubble. Like, you can't even really tell on this one, but here you can see that there's a flagstone texture. Probably you can see that on the base. I mean, it, it could have been some just dirt and rubble around that. Oh well, anyway, um, then we have the elves, who are now fully assembled and based in, here I just, because they seem to be standing on some sort of outdoor basis, I mean this is just spaghetti, um, I just added some, some of the, the, uh, the earth paste and uh, glued on the different parts, this one was easy, I'm not sure why this guy is holding the scythe this way seems odd I'm not sure if this if I've covered this up we'll we'll see when I put on the primer I think there's enough just glue here to hide the join but mm, I don't know here we got the sword and board fighter the rogue with short sword and dagger I would say dual wielding and the whip dude um, it was difficult to position the whip, whip uh, correctly I, I, I had to um, reshape it and I did that before attaching the arm I don't know if I should go back and try to maybe lift it up a bit more but nah I, I think it's okay the way it is it's sort of in motion. There's a flow to it. Yeah. Uh, so these guys just 
waiting for everything to dry a little bit and set and uh, like tomorrow I can well <laughs> tomorrow n n not tomorrow as in Tuesday because you're watching this on Monday but tomorrow compared to the day where I'm when I'm filming this uh, which is during the week I'll, I'll prime them that's the day I saw and I'll show you what they look like primed as well well here we have the next batch of bones all primed and ready the little gazebo uh, looks looks a little wonky here. Maybe I should have fixed. I don't know how I would have done fixed this uh, part here. Uh, maybe the hot and cold thing, but uh, oh well. We'll just say that it's 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 an old structure and it's starting to sag a bit. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Anyway, we have the elves, and and we have the kobolds in the back here, and because and I I primed the kobolds this red brown because that is ex actually very close to the skin tone that I'm going for. For 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 the kobolds, so I thought that was a good base to lay down. For, for the elves, though, I'm going to do various colors, and so I went with the light. This is like a tan. Um, uh, primer? Oh, and in the back here I, I have those two. Uh, Sally Starfield and Megan the Buccaneer. Is still waiting to be painted tonight actually tonight because tonight I'm going to the gaming store again and and um, uh, painting uh, so but because I okay I, I I've, I've done even more work here I've done basically finished the basis for these so maybe I won't bring just those two maybe I'll bring one of the elves as well and get started on uh, just so I can have something to spend the time on. Anyway, this, is, this seems like a reasonable uh, batch of stuff to get through for next week. So this is the part of the show where I talk about upcoming projects, namely what I'm prepping for next week. And because I thought because I'm painting uh, a pirate lady tonight at the gaming store, so why not prep another pirate lady for next week's gaming store session? This is Patrice from Hasla Free Minis. She doesn't actually look like a Kev sculpt. It might be one of the, the few that aren't. But Sebastian here, which I picked up as a run, her running mate, it definitely is. Now Sebastian is a dungeon delver. Who looks like he's too old for this shit <laughs> but you know what you're gonna do you put a strap on the old plate mail and grab the sword and torch and go delving so yeah i like these uh, th these are very characterful minis that's what i like when i'm painting characters and uh, moving on to bones what from bones for am i going to pick out well here's some scenery uh, now I thought I was I was trying to do them in order of least complex to most complex. I guess I screwed up because uh, the gazebo was actually a little tricky. While this seems much simpler, it's a big flat rocky area with a sort of ritual circle, and there's um, let's see where they are. There's four, three of these little wing spiky things that go into these slots. And that's it. That's all the three-dimensionality there is. So, dead simple. The challenge is making a big flat area like this look interesting. So, I'll have to do some thinking about that. But, I want some minis as well. And, oh my, there's a lot of them here. I, I don't think uh, I'll even have time to prep all of these by next week. But so these this might be a two weeker. But I want to do all the goblins more or less at once, or at least in sequence, uh, soon after each other. And there's a lot of them. 
So here's two packs with 12 each. Uh, there's four sprues in each of these, and on each sprue there's three... The sprues are identical. There's three different minis in each sprue, but the sprues are identical. So there's three of each uh, sculpt. 12 here, 12 here. Uh, six different sculpts, 24 minis in total. No. Yeah, six. Uh, yeah. I think that's correct. <laughs> we'll see uh, if my math checks out. Uh, so these are the rank and file. And this is the pack of the, the Goblin character minis, which are another nine, I think. Let's see. Here's, here's one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, 33 goblins in total. Now, a lot of these minis have these oval bases, which are not quite 20 millimeter. They're a little more in one direction and one axis, a little less on the other. But I've thought about it and I've decided that since I have gone with 20 mils as the standard for all these small size S creatures in D&D terms, like kobolds and goblins, uh, for consistency I'm going to keep doing that and I'll just let the overhang hang over, so to speak. It's okay. I don't mind. And uh, yeah. I, I didn't mention it when I showed you the ones I'd already prepped, but I was not very happy with the way I'd extended the, the stonework with my own little green stuff sculpting, so I'm just gonna... It, it just doesn't look right. It, I, I'm not a sculptor. I, I can't even make something as simple as that. So... Or I suppose I could if I put a lot more work into it, but it's not worth it. So I'm just gonna fill out the little extra space on the the washer with some green, uh, some 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 the earth texture stuff, and just paint it gray and say that it's it's some loose gravel next to the cobblestones, and call it a day. Yeah, that is the plan. But wait, I have another thing to talk about. Yeah, you know how in um, past summers, mostly summers, I think, I have done projects where I have looked at these DVD sets from Dark Sword Miniatures called Masterworks Miniature Painting, and I've painted along with them. I painted the same minis uh, that were shown in the DVD sets. The first was Jen Haley and Anne Forrester, which was a three DVD set. The second was Marika Reimer, a four DVD set. Now I have the last one left, Jessica Rich, a six DVD set, over 20 hours of instruction. Oh my god, this will take a while. Um, and so I, I, I bought this as a set with the appropriate minis, and I have them here. There's seven of them from the Dark Sword line. Several are... Um, from the Elmore Masterworks. This one is called some Female Rogue with Sword. And this one is called Female Mage on Stairs. And then we have the George R. R. Martin Masterworks. We have Shay and Arston Whitebeard. I think that's wrong. It's Arstan with, a, with an A, not an O. But I, my memory might be wrong. I don't know. Uh, Who's Arson Whitebeard, you might wonder. He's not in Game of Thrones. Well, he sort of is. It's 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 a name that only occurs in the books, where where another character goes undercover under an assumed name for a while. And they don't do that in the show because it would be pointless. He could because he couldn't fool the audience. They would see who the guy is. <laughs> So they just have him use his usual name. And Shade does not look like she does in the show much, really. 
it, it's not the, I think the sculpts were made before the show was even on the air and just based on on the artist's impression from the books and then we have three from their usual line uh, from the visions and fantasy line we have the rabbit ranger Jessica continues the tradition that uh, Marika started of liking critters, liking to paint uh, critter, uh, non-human creatures. There's also the female rogue, also from Visions of Fantasy, and finally another of these winged female characters, this one called the Thief of Hearts, which is supposed to be a cleric. Um, and that's that's the figure you see on the cover here. That's the sitting on stairs as a female mage. And here's Arsene Whitebeard. There's Shay. There's the uh, Rabbit Ranger. And yeah, there's a lot of info here. Uh, so this is something I will be doing a little bit of each week during the whole summer, I think. I think uh, my, my plan is... Preliminary plan is to watch like maybe one disc per week and try to do the things shown in that disc. Uh, though... I mean, the first disc has a lot of stuff that's not really a thing that I need to sort of paint along with the introduction, the tools, the prep, the color theory. I'll rewatch those things just to get in the mood, so to speak, but it's not, there's no call to action in there. Then we get to base coating and blending, highlighting and shading, which is, well, that's everything. <laughs> that's the whole job of, of miniature painting. So I, I suppose this is probably just a basic introduction. I have watched through all these ones before, but that was years ago when I first got it. I don't remember exactly what was on there. And then finally, female skin tones and features fair skin uh, in this one. So, well, let's say if, if I, if I, if I uh, manage to prep all these by next week, uh, that'll be good enough for the first week. Uh, that, let's, let's say that. Let's take that as our bar. And if we do more than that, well, great. Anyway, lots of projects on the go. And this is because uh, the reason, of course, is that, that summer vacation is coming up. I, I, I'm a teacher, as, as you probably know. And uh, uh, spring semester is over in a week. Actually, I'm, 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 I'm only working until next Monday. Next Monday is my last day of work. Uh, and then I have eight weeks summer vacation and so during that time I am gonna have a lot of time to paint and thus I'm starting up all these ambitious projects that is the deal but anyway jam-packed episode this week I hope you enjoyed it as always I uh, hope you click like and subscribe if you haven't done so share the video comment on it and come back next week same time same channel for more rambling till then this is Doc Yang signing off